Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. So today I wanted to discuss the reason why we moved our family back to New Zealand. So as you were all aware, we initially moved to Melbourne and and the whole idea was that we we're going to start afresh and and permanently, you know, live there. Then the pandem the pandemic hit. So as you guys all know, nobody anticipated the amount of stress it would put on people the um, and the health system and just the sheer magnitude of loss and the effect it had on families and just the economies, everything. was It was just a devastating year. 2020 was rough and the pandemic made it hell for everyone. The reality is we had just been um, in the country since September. So October, November, December. So we started like on our fourth month, right? That's when we started hearing news about the pandemic around the world. And at first, like everyone else, we're seeing it on the news and it's like, wow, that is so bad for them. Man, you know, did y'all see what what's happening in Italy? Do you guys see what's happening? And it's wild because um, as sad as it was, you, you still don't realize the magnitude of it until it happens to you or it, it, it narrows in to you, right? So in, I think it was around Feb, that's when there was discussions, um, the, the Melbourne government started discussing potentially putting um, the city in a lockdown. So we, obviously nobody knew what this is about because we have never experienced anything like this, right? So I started thinking ahead. <laughs> um, if anybody knows me, then I am super, super paranoid about a lot of things. And I just like to be planned, you know, well planned. And then I remember seeing this particular post on the news that kids won't be going to school. And then I thought, what? Kids won't be going to school? Then what about people that are going to work? And so at this point, we're probably in the country for like five months, right? And then they start discussing um, about stopping people from going, people who work for non-essential businesses to try to work from home. And if they can't work from home, they're out of a job. And so at this point, this was going to be devastating to my family because we had just been in the country for less than six months. And obviously right now, majority of the time we have one income who, and it was my husband working at the time. And we had savings that we were living off, but nobody's wanting to live off their savings, especially in an uncertain time, like um, going through a pandemic during lockdown also. So at this point, I think we started really seriously discussing it as a household. And um, I, I said to, to my husband that, you know what? We actually have to take this seriously and try to be one step ahead. Um, I will leave. And at that time with his work, everything was great. Um, they didn't seem like they were going to slow down anytime soon. And they weren't sure what, I think also because we didn't quite understand what non-essential work was and what essential work was, right? Um, so at this point, he was still working and I decided that I will come back home to New Zealand with the children until the kids get back to school. Then I'll fly back. Can you all imagine? I thought we could easily just be flying in between Melbourne and New Zealand, but no, that was not the case. <laughs> that was just not the case. Um, it got to a point when where we realized that um, my husband's workplace was not going to be considered as an essential place of work. And for people who had been with the company for over 12 months, they get subsidies to cover their um, wages. We had only been in the country for six months. We didn't qualify for anything. And if y'all know, New Zealanders don't qualify for a lot in New Zealand, in, in Australia, but it's okay. You know, Australia provides opportunities. We go over there to work and build. But in this particular situation, we were not able to work. We were not able to build. If anything, it was going to put us in a position where we are living off our savings and I think the scary part was that it was just uncertain how long we were going to be in that situation for. So I so I told my husband, I'll go with the kids. And guys, I booked the ticket as soon as I could. Um, I think I was just gauging it 
based on what New Zealand was doing. And at the time, New Zealand was stepping into level four lockdown, which was ahead of most countries. And I think that's what made um, New Zealand have one step ahead of the game. And that's why we don't have, we're at level one at the moment and we don't have many cases, community cases. So that was the situation then. And I decided, yeah, the kids and I will come back to New Zealand then my husband can be visiting us, right? <laughs> that just goes to show how um, we thought things would just get better and they just got worse. So then he later came over and joined us. So um, COVID was devastating for our family because we did, as you guys all know, we brought you along with us. We made the big change and big decision to move our whole family to Melbourne. We sold everything we had not with the intention to six months later come back. Do you know what it is? So I think that was the um, the hurtful side of it. But you know what? I um, am super grateful that we are healthy and we're doing okay. There are people during this pandemic that have lost family members and have lost their loved ones and have not been able to say goodbye to them. And people, it has been devastating. So us losing stuff, don't take it as if we are, um, I am undermining the issue. I am not. Um, it's just that, you know, we thought we we're going to build and grow and and have our whole, you know, and, and grow our family in Melbourne. But um, the pandemic came and I do now um, appreciate the level of just reaction that we did. We reacted very well and on time because things got worse, particularly in Melbourne. And New Zealand has just um, has managed the whole ordeal a lot better, as we all know, um, compared to the rest of the countries in the world. However, in saying that, um, our love and our prayers still go out to people who are still affected by COVID. Um, this pandemic is something that we will soon be over. Um, but if you are affected in any way, our love and um, our prayers are with you. Um, but yes, just thought I needed to share a little update as to why we are back in New Zealand. And yes, guys, we are back to stay. Home is where the heart is. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much um, for tuning in and um, catch me on my next video. It's your girl, Foxy. Ciao.